Welcome to Melt, I'm Suresh Venkat. We're doing things a bit differently this episode by turning our focus to two different industries. First up, technology and the big buzzword in marketing these days, artificial intelligence. We begin with a conversation with Amrita Thapar, the chief marketing officer of tech giant Microsoft in India. Recorded after her session on AI at the MMA Impact event, Amrita outlines the fundamentals that marketers need to know when deploying AI solutions. So first up, let's get ready to melt with Amrita Thapar. Hi Amrita, welcome to Melt. Your session was titled Solving Real World Problems, Solving Complex Real World Problems Using AI. What was your key message? So I think uh, the reason I loved this session and I love doing it with, uh, you know, Sam Garg is because he's been doing it for a while. It's not something that's just like come up in the sits, you know, generative AI and chat GPT kind of took everything by storm in the last couple of months. But he actually started about, uh, I think, two years ago. Uh, and his uh, company, Right Sonic, actually helps create content at scale. So whether it's social media posts, whether it's product brochures, whether it's web content, he actually helps uh, you know people create all of this uh, content using AI. The session itself, he actually talks about how uh, he was launching a product and the biggest challenge that he had was writing the copy for his web page. So that's when he realized that, you know, that's such a common problem that what if he could help uh, marketers, copywriters, advertising people, uh, search, you know, SEO optimization, all of this through an AI writing tool. So that's how it was born. And I just love it. Like, I think for anybody who's in marketing, in content, in, uh, you know, in digital things, which we all are, uh, it was, it's, it's just a product that whose time uh, is, has come. Amrita, you're a marketer yourself. How does AI help you do your day-to-day -day job? So I think, you know, the truth is all of us uh, have been uh, using AI for a long time now without even realizing it that we have. We expect it across all aspects of our life. So for example, Spotify, we listen to music that has that is AI recommended. We shop according to AI recommendations. So similarly in our work, I think all marketers today use things like machine learning for lead scoring. Uh, you use uh, uh, AI for, uh, you know, search optimization. Uh, you use AI for uh, image generation or, you know, creatives where possible. So even things like, you know, and it's not just Microsoft, you know, whether it's Adobe, you know, there's a bunch of products today which actually uh, are all use AI and large uh, machine learning models to deliver uh, outcomes, deliver results faster, more efficient processes and workflows. Okay, when did you personally start dabbling with AI? I think there's been a bunch of tools. Like I remember years ago, if you did actually take, uh, you know, put in a Excel file on a tool, you could get a infographic that was AI generated. So it would make sense of the data that you had in your Excel and produce an infographic. Today, these things are fairly easy to do using, you know, even basic uh, 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 software on your desktop. So for example, I mean, one of my favorite AI tools is actually uh, the entire Microsoft Office suite. So for example, PowerPoint actually gives you, you know, suggestions on how to use better design. So that is day-to-day -day AI that we expect and we use, and it makes just making PowerPoint presentations that much easier. So Amrita, what are some of the principles that marketers need to know? Marketers who are interested in using AI, what do they need to know? I think you should be, uh, so first of all, there's a bunch of tools that you can use, whether it's for creatives, whether it's for uh, serving up ads, whether it's for creating copy, use it responsibly, use it transparently. A lot of these help marketers scale far more rapidly. So I think marketers also have a responsibility as they use more of these toy, you know, tools to actually uh, share learnings, best practices. So I think that is uh, one responsibility marketers definitely should do as a community. So how does a platform like MMA help evangelize uh, the topic of AI, Amrita? So MMA, I think, is great because it brings together marketers across multiple disciplines to just uh, learn about the latest uh, advancements, about thought leadership, uh, about actually uh, keeping up with what's changing. And a lot of these trends, actually, the pace of adoption is also different across different industries. So, for example, I'm always fascinated by the things that I learn from people in retail and e-commerce. Uh, and the kind of things, tactics that they uh, adopt or the, you know, the, the direction that they take with some of their campaigns or adoption or their early adopters. Uh, similarly, I think uh, 
uh, the companies such as uh, you know Microsoft or Big Tech bring in a lot of knowledge in terms of how we look at things like AI as and you know the practice of responsible AI about transparency, about trust and governance, and that also brings in a lens. So I think just the fact that you have people from different industries, different uh, uh, different realms, actually helps bring together a community to help inspire, educate each other. Tell us a little bit about, a, maybe with a few examples, about how Microsoft helps both companies and individuals integrate AI into their work. Our entire approach to AI is think of it as your co-pilot. So we have co-pilot for the web, which is, you know, Bing uses chat GPT and it becomes your co-pilot. So you can chat and ask questions. You can uh, create, uh, you can have a conversation. So whether it's, you know, the most common example is travel. The other common example that comes up is, you know, help me plan a menu for 10 guests who are vegan and or, and Indian. Uh, other use cases are co-pilot for work. So for example, our entire M365 has, uh, you know, co-pilot that is uh, basically going to help you do, you know, write a summary from a meeting, draft uh, notes from a meeting, and some of these are really accurate. So if you think about the fact that every Teams meeting, you can actually send the notes immediately and action items without having to go through laborious notes that somebody may or may not have taken. I just think that it's going to become a no brainer. I think even the novelty factor, we forget how fast we accept uh, things that uh, seem unique today. I mean, even just think about the fact that your smartphone or your uh, word processor prompts you how to what to write next. So I think that is something that we just all expect now. So when you use a tool that doesn't, it seems uh, really slow and clunky. There's Copilot for things like security, which will help everybody manage their entire uh, security for their devices far more efficiently. There is Copilot for uh, business applications. For example, the Dynamic 365 has a Copilot that helps you launch a marketing campaign far faster than you would do it in a you know kind of analog world. So these are just some of the examples. We are very clear that this is AI is a uh, is not the pilot. It's the co-pilot that actually helps humans uh, uh, work faster, smarter, more efficiently, more product and with higher productivity. A couple of questions about your job, Amrita. As CMO, how much time do you spend educating your customers, and how much time do you spend selling to them? So I think we do a bit of both. So I think in some things like um, AI, a lot of it is, of course, educating. But in some things like, uh, uh, you know, we had a GitHub Copilot where we were actually, uh, again, GitHub is Copilot is a Copilot for uh, programmers and uh, uh, developers. Uh, you'll be surprised how, uh, you know, the appetite is so strong that it's actually, you know, it's it's more about doing the demos and educating and less about selling. So I would say it's a mix of both. Tell us about how you work with your co-pilot. There's gut, there's gut feeling and the marketer's instinct. And then there's this whole pool and sea and lake of data that we are all swamped with. And you're saying that AI is your co-pilot. So tell us about how you navigate it. How do you use AI as your co-pilot? I would say that, you know, as marketers, we need to look at both. You know, it's your left brain, right brain. You have to look at AI as, uh, you know, augmenting your intelligence, the co-pilot. But eventually, you know, I think the big decisions are based on instinct, but even instinct is actually based on past knowledge or based on the market scenario or the trends that you see. So I do think that a marketer's job has got harder because you have to combine both creativity and ingenuity with data. And even if you sometimes take decisions that aren't that are uh, based on intuition, you have to basically put yourself, you know, put a stake in the ground and say, this is the outcome that I will measure. Is there a buzzword that you're absolutely tired of that we should retire? I think it's this debate versus AI versus creativity because there is no debate. You need both. Okay, Amrita, on the flip side of that question, is there a certain term or a concept or a buzzword that should be getting more attention but is not getting? I would say it's inclusive marketing. I still think that, you know, we are really way behind when it comes to uh, making sure that we create messaging, advertising, experiences that actually cater to everybody uh, regardless of, uh, you know, language or uh, uh, ability to read, write or ability to uh, see. So, you know, I think that accessibility, inclusivity is is critical. I still feel like a lot of our uh, messages that we and, and, you know, even if you're on the jury of a marketing awards or something, 
there is a bias towards you know certain demographics, certain languages, certain uh, certain uh, markets. The buzzword that we definitely need to be more cognizant of is inclusive marketing. All right, final question for you, Amrita. You're a former journalist. How does your journalism background help you as in your role as a marketer? So I think marketers are looking for the next big story as well. And in journalism, they always said you're as good as your last story. So I think in marketing, you're as good as your last campaign or your last big win. So I think that's, uh, you know, that kind of curiosity, uh, interest for the next big thing, uh, the hunt for it, and always, you know, continuing to look forward is what actually I would say is kind of the common thread that runs across. All right, Amrita Thapar of Microsoft, thank you for being on Melt. Thank you so much. And with that, it's a wrap on this episode. You can follow Melt on social media. The handle is ready to melt or simply log on to readytomelt.com. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Suvenk on Twitter or X. Till next week, goodbye and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.